Why do you want a sunroom like this? You can relax. No, that's not what you said. You said because I can put laundry in. <laughs> Mayu loves to clean. Oh my gosh. This is all she's thinking about. Laundry and vacuuming. She wants... <laughs> if she had a Dyson vacuum cleaner and a sunroom like this, it would be like heaven for her. So we are smelling this first class $170 tea. I'll be the first to admit I'm not actually a big fan of green tea but they infuse it with like extra scents and it's <laughs> and it smells really delicious yeah. So Osolok is a big Korean tea company but if you come to the museum they have a limited tea that I guess they roast. Have you ever heard of green tea that's roasted, Mayu? We oh. have in Japan roasted. <laughs> that's right. They have everything in Japan. <laughs> but green this is the tea. first time I've seen anything that's roasted that's green tea. Okay, just when we're about to leave, we found <laughs> an elevator. You can see the huge green tea fields out there. I can see everything around here. But we're on the second floor. But you can go to the third floor and there's an open view area. <laughs> okay, there's there's a lot of bugs here. But yeah, you get a panoramic, not quite a 360, but definitely a 180 view. Okay guys, so our first impressions of Osoluk Tea Museum. It's pretty small. <laughs> it is small. Yeah, reading between the lines, I believe they said it's the biggest green tea museum in Korea because there's probably a bigger tea museum. Um, as far as if you should come here or not, I think you should because we're still going to check out Innisfree House which is located right next to each other. It's on the way to the western coastline and it's really fast to get here by the highway. Other than that, um, it's completely free for entrance here and at the Innisfree House. It's one of the more popular locations for people to come. Uh, we've seen it in the other vlogs and people come here and they eat the overpriced uh, ice cream. Ice cream and the green tea roll, yeah. We didn't get suckered into that because we already tried the pingsu at another Osolok in Karasugil. Although it was tasty, I'm not gonna over exaggerate and say it's worth, you know, $10 for that like mini portion. It, yeah, yeah. Gonna just keep it real. It's not amazing. It's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's good. It's good. But if Money isn't an issue for you, go ahead and uh, take all of them. Yeah, get the combo set down there that's like $30. $30 for two, three people. <laughs> Which is uh, more than the price of our flight here to Jeju, though. <laughs> okay, so we just exited the tea museum and we're now gonna check out the tea stone room. Wait, hold on. Okay, I'm just gonna read that sign. Okay, basically they're saying it's tea time and you can't enter. Ah, check that out. So that's what they do in the tea stone room. I'm not sure you can see through the glare, but the woman is cutting tea and doing all sorts of stuff there. So now we're gonna walk to the Innisfree house, which is a Korean cosmetics brand. It's completely free to enter there as well. I'm actually more interested in it because I use their products because it's not that expensive. Whereas I don't really drink green tea and we bought a ton of tea the last time we went to Sri Lanka. And if you are a tea lover, highly recommend checking out Sri Lanka. I think it definitely has a lot more to offer than here as far as if you wanted to know how things are made. Yeah, all the different kinds of teas. It was really amazing. Okay guys, so we're at the Innisfree house. It's relatively small, it's just a room. But you start out by writing whatever you want to write, putting your things on there. Um, they got a stamp zone where you can make things out of stamps. Oh, so cute! You got the volcanic rocks in the bottom. 
Palasan on the background. Oh, this is very authentic. Oh, I like it. They have an area here where you can make your own natural soap. Then they got the main shop area right here for the cashiers. My use checking out the products. You like it? Yeah. And then they got a cafe on the left hand side and then this little cool area. Hmm. I'm not quite sure what it is. I think they're just promoting their products. <laughs> Saying these are the ingredients that we use to make some of the cosmetics that we have. So the lowdown on the soap making experience is that you'll pay $12 if you're just a single person and you want to make a character like that. That's actually pretty cool. Um, I don't know what he's supposed to be though. He's like a cool guy. And uh, they also have these other sets here that are $15, but they're saying it's possible for two people to make soaps with these kids. I guess they end up looking like this. Yeah. And then you got, yeah, this cafe area with the tea fields. Actually, I like this view of the tea fields more than Osolok. They just had a garden there. Yeah, whereas the Innisfree house has a view of the tea fields. Another thing we noticed though is, all right, I'm not gonna say that this is budget friendly, but the food and the desserts they have here seem far more interesting than Usholok. And the prices seem a little bit more reasonable. Yeah, it's only six and a half dollars, but that's better compared to like a slice of roll cake over at Usholok. We were actually looking at this as well. Interesting, seven dollars. Palasan cake. By the way, Jeju-do is a big volcano, like Hawaii. Yeah, so Palasan is in the center of it, and eh, is this still active volcano? No. That I don't know, babe. I'm not a geologist. Okay, so you may notice that there's not much of a crowd here, but. Believe me, I've seen the other vlogs and it's usually packed. You're lying! It's because we came here at 9 o'clock because we wanted to come here first thing so that we can go to the west coast and drive around and experience the coast as much as we can. Okay, so we're about to leave and it's already quickly becoming very crowded here. Oh, <laughs> I don't know, thank god, but... It's a little before 11 and we miss this crowd right here. It must be like a school field trip. So highly recommend you come here early in the morning. It's less crowded, you get to just breeze through this place. So Mai decided to just start jaywalking here and the crossing guard doesn't even look at us, doesn't care. She wanted to take a picture of this so. I'm gonna let her do her Gaspard Edna you thing. Okay guys, so now we are finished with Innisfree and Osolok. It's a nice experience, but our main thing today was to get to the west coast of Jeju-do and check out the UNESCO Natural Heritage Sites. So, see you there. Thanks again guys for checking out the video and I'm really sorry if I sounded a little negative during this vlog and it's because I really couldn't hide my emotions about how disappointed I was about the two places in his free house and also luck after being so hyped up after watching all these videos and vloggers vlogging about Jeju though they just kept mentioning this place and said this was the best place but uh, in hindsight I, I think it was possibly the worst place we visited not because it's a bad place but because all the other locations in Jeju though were just so amazing it was so breathtaking and I really want to show you guys Jeju though in its full glory so that more people can find out about this place and visit this place and understand how amazing it is. In hindsight, I wish we spent this extra bit of time 
to explore some of the other areas that we couldn't hit up, and we'll definitely be going back to Jeju-do to do more vlogs from this place eventually. We still, however, have three more days of traveling to do and vlogs to come, so if you like our vlog, you want to go to the not-so-touristy places and want to find out about all the different locations and see if it's right for you, please subscribe and check back with us weekly for more vlogs about living and traveling in Asia. Okay guys, we actually just stopped by a breakfast place. This is a kuppa place, which is what Koreans eat for breakfast. Basically, rice with soup. And this seems to be a popular joint here. It's called achigukpa. We ordered two of them. They're eight dollars each. They had other stuff though, and we were very tempted to get the tonkatsu that's made out of Jeju-do pig. So the main dish hasn't come out yet, but the side dish is already very, very impressive. Super fresh, very Jeju-do style. Ooh, it smells so good. What do you think, babe? Try to describe the taste. It's so hard, huh? Okay, I'm not gonna season this quite yet, so I can just tell you how it tastes before I start seasoning it. But, I can already tell the broth itself looks very clean and clear. I think this this is moo. I think in English that's called turnip. But it gives it like a slightly spicy but clean overtone. But it definitely is a beef broth. But the beef itself doesn't taste very fatty. It's Probably the Jeju do beef, <laughs> and uh, you obviously got you know the standard green onions that all the Korean soups will have. Yeah, that's about it. It's it's very clean, refreshing taste. It's not very fatty or oily like some of the other soups I've had. It's very Jeju do. It's very fresh. Oh, this is like perfect. Usually, Koreans like to add some of this spicy, like seafoody kind of thing to it. But I'm just gonna keep it the way it is. It tastes perfect. But it is called kukbap because kuk soup pop rice. Because you're supposed to mix the rice into soup. Rice, like What I do notice though is that the rice here. It's very fat. Oh, super chewy. And it's not super oily like uh, the rice that I'm used to eating in Korea. Definitely not flaky like jasmine rice or the Thai rice. It's like a perfect combination in between. Yeah! This rice complements this broth so well. And then, if you need a little bit of spice, grab a little kimchi. Mm. Oh, what is this? This is squid chokpal, I think. Mm. Hey, I think I'm an artist. <laughs> you are. I so much prefer this over like the sweet desserty stuff that we saw <laughs> that the little kids are eating in their teenies and twenties. Oh.